cataractcoach.com, six mistakes that young surgeons make and how you can prevent that issue from happening to you. For more than 20 years, I've done my own private clinic in Los Angeles and surgery center in Beverly Hills, but I also was very heavily involved in resident teaching. For more than 20 years, for 22 years, I taught the UCLA residents how to do ocular surgery, in particular, cataract surgery. And as you guys know, I'm very proud of and honored with their teaching award five times, where no other faculties even won it twice. So something I really had a passion for and something I was really good at. But I found that there were six common mistakes that the young surgeons make. And I want to go through those with you to make sure that you, on your path to learning and becoming a better ocular surgeon, you're not going to make those same mistakes. Number one, the mistake was not knowing your patient inside and out. When we're there in the operating room, you, of course you have to know which eye you're operating on. You got to know everything about that eye. What's the anatomy like? What's the axial length? Where's the steep axis of astigmatism? What are the other comorbidities? How's the retina look? You got to know the other eye. But you also have to know the patient as a person. Is it that patient with sleep apnea? Is this the patient that had bad CHF and couldn't position flat on the OR table or had bad kyphosis? Is this the patient that has Parkinson's and can't hold still? You need to know your patient. Is this the patient with bad diabetes where the blood sugar is going to be very high and that's going to impact your healing after the surgery? All these factors are important. So it's important that you know your patient inside and out. That is critical. When you go, like me, even today in the surgery center, I meet every single patient right before the surgery and we talk. Hey, good morning, good to see you. As to make sure we're on the same page, we're gonna make your right eye with the torque monofocal lens sharpest distance vision. Correct? All right, correct. Make sure you're on the same page. Explain to the patient what's gonna happen in the operating room, go through everything, do your h and update. Even in the real world, you have to do that. It's not just residency. Number two was being able to set up the equipment. You need to know how to set up the equipment from scratch. Go to the operating room early, put the micro- microscope in position, bring it over, set up the oculars, dial in your PD, make sure the oculars are clean, do a white bounce on the camera microscope, make sure the focus of the camera is the same as the focus in your microscope. Set up the phaco machine. Great if your technicians can help you do this, but you have to know how to do it yourself. What happens when you're called in in the middle of the night because the patient has a ruptured globe and they have an open lens capsule? And you can't leave that white, fluffy lens material in the AC. you got to wash it out. But what if you don't have your normal scrub tech? You need to know how to set up the machines. So set up the equipment ahead of time by yourself. Make sure your settings are programmed in the FACO machine. You wouldn't drive my car. If you are driving my car, you wouldn't use my seat settings and my mirror settings. So same way, when you're going to operate, you need to make sure the machine is set up to your settings and your liking. That is important. You have to know everything in that operating room because ultimately you're the captain of the ship and everything ultimately falls on your shoulders. Number three, you got to drape the patient correctly. You don't want lashes in the visual, in in your operating field. You don't want to have all the secretions from the the lid margin on your tear film. No. Positioning of the patient. We just featured a resident video where you could tell the patient's chin was down the whole time and the eye wasn't a primary. Get the patient so that the iris is parallel to the floor of the room. Position the head so the patient's comfortable. Tape the head down so the patient's not going to move. Get the eye in good position. Table height of the OR table where you want it so you can sit underneath it. Reach your pedals without having your knees hit the bed. All these things are very important. Positioning so you can look through the microscope without kind of distorting or tilting or hurting your neck. Too many ophthalmologists end up with cervical disc disease in their necks because of the challenge and the problem of operating through a microscope or looking through the slit lamp oculars. So you got to keep that in mind. Start your career right. Ergonomics are important. Patient positioning is important. Draping is important. Number four, and we saw this even recently in the resident video here on Cataract Coach, a poor incision. A bad incision has cascading problems. You make a bad incision, you say, "Ah, what's the big deal? 
Well, because now you're trying to do your capsular rexus, blah, 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 the viscoelastic burps out the incision, AC gets shallower, rexus wants to run out. Or your incision is too wide. As you're doing the cataract surgery, there's too much leakage from it. So now you have too much outflow fluid and doesn't balance the inflow fluid, so you have anterior chamber instability. Posterior capsule comes up and hits the phaco probe. Now what? Now you've got an open posterior capsule, vitreous prolapse, the eye is never going to be the same. So the incision is so important. And remember, too, it's part of your signature. You can do a cataract surgery, and then 10 years later, someone will see that patient at the little lamp and say, wow, look at that incision. It looks really clean, nice and square, no chevron sign, very nice architecture, well-constructed. That's important. The incision really is that important, let alone the long-term effects of astigmatic flattening that it'll cause, things of this nature, how well it'll seal, great long-term uh, stability. All these things add up. You got to have a great incision. Number five, failure to keep the eye in primary. As you're operating on that eye, I want to see those Purkinje light and them just stay right in the center of the cornea. I don't want to see the eye wandering all over the place as you're operating. The eye has to stay in primary and you have to pivot in the incisions. Remember this, the reason you have sub one millimeter accuracy in eye surgery is not because you can do this to less than a millimeter. No, it's because your instrument has a pivot point. So when you move it outside the eye 30 millimeters, it moves in the eye one millimeter, a 30 to one reduction. That's why pivoting is so important. So you have to pivot in the incisions, stay in primary, don't distort the incisions, float in the incisions instead, and you'll have a much nicer surgery and a much better outcome. And then the last thing, number six, you have to learn from every case. If I go to the operating room and the resident didn't put a memory stick in the camera to record the surgery, I think, are you kidding? You've done like 50 surgeries and you're not recording the video of the surgery? This is game day footage. So you can go home and watch your surgery and learn and say, hey, here's what I could do better. You can be, as I always tell you, your own toughest critic. At this age, with this much gray hair, and tens of thousands of surgeries done, I still record my cases. Now, I won't keep all the videos. If it's a very routine case, I'll just keep writing over that same thumb drive. But I want to be able to go back, if I want to, and I have an unusual case, to go back and study it. And in fact, teach you what I learned from that case here on Cataract Coach. So those are the six important things that you have to keep in mind. And if you're a beginning surgeon, and I call that less than a thousand cataract surgeries done, you need to really adhere to these six things because it'll make you a better surgeon. All of this is an investment in your own future. And one day, I want you to have the skill set so that I'll say, wow, that's amazing. Hey, you can do surgery on my eye if I ever need it. Thanks for watching.